another edition of the UTPA Baseball <laughs> Show. My name's Jonah Goldberg. This is Manny Mantrano. Thank hey. you, Jonah. Good seeing you. Good seeing you as well. You know, you're about to coach your 1,000th career game. I think you're four or five away or three away. I, I've already lost count. You're so close. You're 996, I think. Didn't even know that. That's a lot of baseball games. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been really blessed, Jonah, uh, to be able to do something uh, that I have a passion for and that, that I enjoy. So, um, yeah, again, I've been very blessed. I didn't even know that until you brought it up. But uh, you being the numbers guy that you are, I, uh, I believe you. So just let me know when it happens. I will. We'll, we'll go celebrate with some sparkling apple cider. Now we're talking. Absolutely. Now we're talking. Well, these last three games on your countdown to 1,000 are certainly incredibly exciting. Uh, this weekend, your pitching staff didn't allow an earned run. You, you're, you had a, an ERA of zero while beating the WAC leading Sacramento State Hornets two out of three. You know what? Uh, uh, Sac State, it's, 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 they're a very good team, Jonah. Um, their pitchers are, are good pitchers. They're well coached. They have good players. Um, and I was, I was happy to see that uh, our pitchers – uh, match their uh, their pitchers pitch by pitch. Uh, couldn't ask for a better uh, uh, conference weekend as far as baseball. It was good baseball Friday night. It was uh, for the two innings and then good baseball Saturday, good baseball Sunday, uh, both on uh, on our part and also Sac State. Uh, there were great college games and they were they were a lot of fun to be part of. Oh, absolutely. And you know, even with the the stoppage on Friday, so they they got in two innings and then uh, all of a sudden there's a lightning delay and then the rains came and we had. Really, it was our first rain-affected anything since February, I think, uh, at least at home. And we stop, we come back on Saturday. Beautiful field. What a great job by Jaime to get that field ready to go. Mm -hmm. And you never know it had even rained. Yep. And then you start back up, and Sam Street uh, really earns that tag of Super Sam. He comes back, and he keeps pitching. You know, he threw uh, 22 pitches or 23 pitches the night before Sam. Sam did. Um, then we were debating what to do with him, whether to bring him back Saturday, uh, maybe start him on Sunday. Uh, so we told him uh, we were going to give him a call Saturday early morning, see how he felt, how his arm felt. Uh, we called him early. He said he was fine. Um, so he started, uh, he continued that game from Friday night. Um, and he pitched well. He should have won one nothing. Unfortunately, a uh, couple miscues on defense opened up the, uh, the door uh, uh, for Sac State, and they scored all their runs in that inning. But uh, you're right, Friday night I felt I was back in South Florida, Jonah. The, uh, the lightning, the wind, the rain, it was, uh, it was a little bit scary. Um, it was like a hurricane was coming. <laughs> so, uh, again, uh, as you said, Jaime, our, our grounds guy, did a terrific job with the fields um, to get it ready. It was, a, you know, basically like it never rained. Um, and it was a great game. That first game uh, with Sam, we lost, uh, but we came back strong the second game with uh, Blake English through a wonderful game. Um, and then it was a great uh, Sunday with our senior day and all the seniors playing and being able to pull out the victory the way that we did. It was 364 days after the last time you'd had a starter start a game that got suspended and then come back and not only pitch the next day, but throw a complete game because the previous year on the same corresponding weekend, Dylan Badura did it up in northern Colorado. And it's amazing to me, and I think it speaks a lot to the conditioning of your pitchers and the program you have in place, that they're not only able to come back and pitch the next day, but throw a complete game. Well, you know what? Um, one thing um, that I'm very proud of, Jonah, is uh, in the 18 years I've been a college head coach, I've only lost one pitcher um, to arm surgery. Wow. Um, and considering they usually have anywhere from 12 to 16 pitchers on their staff, um, I'm very proud of that accomplishment. It shows that, uh, uh, yes, we want to win, but we're going to take care of our pitchers. Uh, what we're doing is working, obviously, when you only lose one pitcher to arm surgery in 18 years. Um, so. Uh, a lot of that is the work that the pitchers put in, obviously. They have to buy into it. Uh, their conditioning, their throwing, their lifting program, their med balls, everything that goes with the, our pitching program. Um, but you're right. Um, they're in great condition. Um, and right now, this is where it's important, especially late in the year. Well, Major League Baseball is on pace for a record number of uh, elbow and arm injuries this year. So uh, any words of wisdom that you can offer to these Major League clubs so maybe they can get their injuries under control? You know, I think one of the things, Jonah, to tell you the truth, uh, that I believe in, and, and, and you know, some, some people are, are, would call me all school, is that uh, whoever came up with that magic number of 100 pitches, you know, what, what is that? They, they break down on the 101st pitch. doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it's not so many... Not the amounts, but how they arrive, Jonah. Um, and if you think about it, it's a nine-inning game. If your pitcher throws 15 pitches uh, per inning, 
at the end of nine innings, that's 135 pitches. It's different than in the fourth inning, the guys are already at 100 pitches. But if they, it's it's not so much the number, in my opinion, but it's how they get there. Um, and I think uh, a big part of the uh, the problems that we're having um, with uh, with pitchers and you know in today's uh, today's game is that they just don't throw enough. Um, you know, they 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 throw, then they stop, then they'll throw, then they'll stop. Um, so that's one end of the spectrum. I think the other end too, you have to be careful as they're growing up. Um, you know, high school ball now. They pitch in high school, then they have a traveling team, then they have another summer team. Um, so in that case, now they're throwing way too much. But I think there has to be some happy medium um, of not throwing too much. But also, I think what's hurting a lot of pitchers nowadays is just that they just don't throw enough. Because they're not conditioned to be able to throw more pitches. So when they have the higher workloads, they're not ready for it. And they get brought along so slowly that, I mean, how do you ever build up strength? You know what? And a part of uh, our, our program, too, is uh, overloading those muscles. Um, you know, the muscles that they're going to use in pitching, um, their shoulders and their elbows. Um, with weighted balls. Now, we're very careful. Uh, we don't go overboard. You know, we don't give them you know, two-pound balls to throw, but um, we do, they do do exercises uh, uh, over, over working those muscles. So when they get that five-ounce ball, um, their muscles are used to the work. They're used to, you know, that exertion because pitching, I mean, their arm is moving at an incredibly fast speed when that arm comes forward. Um, so I think all those things uh, put together really has given us the, uh, uh, the luxury of only losing one pitcher to, uh, to surgery in 18 years. And, um, you know, that's something, again, that I'm very proud of and we're going to continue doing. Is that the kind of thing that you have to communicate to scouts and clubs? Like, like when you think about the teams that are, are looking at a guy like Sam Street, you know, they, if they just look at the numbers on a box score on a piece of paper, they'll see, they'll see a lot of innings, they'll see pitch counts. And for some teams, they'll be like, oh, well, red flag, you know, they've, they've used him a lot. But if they bother to, you know, if they speak to you or if they see how it actually happens, I think they'll realize what you and I realize is that he's actually in great shape for his professional future. Well, and I think now, too, um, a lot of the, uh, the teams are going back to, you know, the days when, I mean, Tommy John was, I mean, you would hear that once in a blue moon. It seems like all the, uh, all the pitchers now, a lot of pitchers, I should say, high school, college, and even pro ball, everything is Tommy John, Tommy John, Tommy John. Um, and I think now with what Nolan Ryan is doing, and Nolan Ryan, obviously Hall of Famer, tremendous pitcher. Um, but now what he's doing with the Rangers, um, having them throw more um, instead of less, um, I think that's, you know, that's something that's going to start changing again in baseball. I um, mean, you don't have to look far. I mean, you, you look at the, uh, uh, the Asian ball players. I mean, those guys, their bullpens are 100 pitches, and they throw and throw, but you know what? They're all healthy. Um, so again, I think it's a combination of uh, good conditioning, uh, program, total body program. But again, I think that uh, a lot of times uh, they just don't throw enough. Um, so whoever came up with the magic number 100, I don't know, you know, again, they break down on the 101st pitch. So it's, a, it's a, to me, that number is, uh, it's trivial. Uh, I think it's, you know, how they feel, how they got there, uh, and more importantly, how, what they're conditioning. Are they conditioned to be able uh, to do that? Well, and certainly your pitching staff is very well conditioned to be able to do that, and that's really led to a lot of the success lately. Now, six straight WAC series wins, and uh, a lot of that is because you've been able to ride your starting pitchers, and Sam Street and Blake English and Alex Henson, who are able to take you deep into games because they're conditioned to do so. Well, when you have that luxury of having guys that can take you deep in the game, um, that's a big plus, Jonah, especially in conference weekends. Um, you know, it used to be an insult to the starting pitcher. Um, years ago when, when the manager would come out and say, hey, we're going to the bullpen. I mean, if you were a starting pitcher, your job, your mentality, um, and everybody around the game thought that, hey, your job is to you know, finish the game. So um, having three guys that, uh, that are able to do that um, you know, pretty much on a consistent basis, that's, that's, that's a plus. Um, it really saves your bullpen, um, especially now going into the WAC tournament. Um, we're going to need uh, our bullpen in there, begin, especially if you fall into the loser's bracket where now you've got to come out of there um, and you really have to use up a lot of pitching. So um, it's a credit to, um, to our guys, to what we've been doing, uh, their, the hard work that they put in. Um, and again, it really is a luxury to have guys that can go deep in the game. Yeah, that WAC tournament, you, you could play as few as three games. You could play as many as seven. Uh, and it all depends on, one, where you're seated, and then, two, how you do with the games that you have. If you're one of the bottom four seeds and you lose on day one, you've got to go six and one to win the WAC championship. If you're one of the top two seeds, you can go three and zero to win the WAC championship. So it's it shows that how much you you could need that pitching depth, 
Um, you certainly hope you don't need it that much. You hope that you have that ability to go 3-0. and And after taking two out of three this weekend from Sacramento State, uh, your game out of the number two seed, uh, your, you've got Utah Valley a game ahead. They've got Grand Canyon. On the, they're at Grand Canyon. Bakersfield, who's tied with you, they're at Seattle. You're at Northern Colorado. So all three teams battling for that spot on the road. Um, technically, Seattle's still alive in the hunt for the two spot, although their elimination number there is one. Um, and you've got the tiebreakers with both of those teams in Bakersfield and Utah Valley. So I'm going to make it sound real simple. All you've got to do is play one game better than Utah Valley and the same or better than Bakersfield, and the two seed's yours. Yeah, um, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a plus when you, um, when, in the head-to-head -head competition because that's the first tiebreaker. Um, how, did, how did you do against the team that you're tied with? Uh, and we were fortunate because both of those, te those teams are very good teams. Utah Valley is a, is a very good team, and so is uh, uh, Bakersfield. Um, but we were fortunate to win those uh, conference weekends, you know, taking two out of three. So that's an advantage. Um, we still need to go up to uh, Colorado, Jonah, as you know, um, and, and do what we need to do to control our own destiny. Uh, we've done it this far, even though we had a slow start. We've been able to creep up every single week, um, and now we're in good position. Uh, to get that number two seed in, in that first round by, and that's going to be big for whatever team that gets it. Obviously, Sac State is going to be number one, and they're getting the buy. But uh, ourselves, Utah, Utah Valley or Bakersfield, the, the team that can get that uh, that number two seed in that first round by, that's big uh, because it really, really uh, saves your pitching. And because it it makes this, even though you've already clinched the playoff spot, such a, a meaningful weekend. It really, it's almost like you're already starting to play playoff games and really get you in the right mentality going into the WAC tournament. Well, you know what, since uh, after our second weekend uh, where we traveled to Seattle, um, we've been letting the guy knows how, or know how important each weekend is and you know what we need to do uh, to make sure that we control our destiny um, and nobody else. We don't have to depend on anybody to get in or the seed that, that, uh, that we're going to get. So it's going to be a big weekend. Um, our guys have already been told this is big because of the reasons you and I have spoken about now. Um, getting the bye the first game, being the second seed, which really goes a long way with your pitching. So our guys are going to, you know, they know what's at stake, um, and we're going to go out to Colorado, uh, play hard, and try to win all three games. And certainly coming in with the momentum, you know, we talked a little about the, the Friday slash Saturday game already, and then, uh, you know, game two of that series, uh, 2 nothing win, and Blake English uh, threw his third shutout in five starts. You know, Blake has uh, really come out strong, uh, Jonah. He... Uh, he really is, uh, he wants to learn, he wants to get better. Um, he's uh, asked a lot of questions every time we're, we're in a bullpen and we're working on something, he's, he's very receptive to it. Uh, he's like a sponge. Um, he came here uh, to get better uh, to, as a pitcher, uh, and he's definitely done that. So um, a lot of credit to him goes, uh, to, or goes to Blake because of the way his character is, and he wants to learn. Um, if we try to ask him to do something, which we have, uh, not only with his, with his mechanics, but his, his grips on some pitches, um, and obviously, uh, it's worked out. So a credit goes, a lot of credit goes to Blake. Um, and, and as you said, he's he's been tremendous the last uh, five outings. And a lot of composure too, because when you think about it, he takes a no hitter into the sixth inning for the second time in three weeks. And for the second time in three weeks, he loses the no hitter on an infield hit. This one of the bunt variety. <laughs> and I mean, that's got to be the most frustrating thing in the world as a pitcher to lose a no hitter on a bunt single. But rather than doing something that could have led to a jam, like hitting a batter or, you know, just overthrowing and then losing the strike zone altogether, he went and he got the next guy out and he just focused on getting the win. That other, you know, again, another thing that he's really be become very good at is uh, his concentration percentage. Uh, keeping it um, throughout the game, pitch by pitch, he's really come a long way with that. And you're right. I mean, they all, they've got, they had, they got four hits off him, uh, but two of them were bunt singles. One of them was in the infield hit variety. So, I mean, he pitched an outstanding game. Uh, if you give up four hits, you throw a shutout, and three of those don't leave the infield. Um, that's quite a feat. Um, and I'm very happy for him. He works hard. He's a wonderful young man. And he just, as a matter of fact, he was just in the office today telling me that uh, uh, he pulled down a 3.2 in the classroom. So um, All right. I told him, I'm, I'll believe it when I see it. But, no, he's, he's a good student. Um, so he's done everything we've asked in the classroom, on the field and off the field, and I'm very happy for him. And, of course, he got a little help from his defense as well, second inning. For example, uh, on back-to-back -back pitches, you get the diving catch by Evan Mason and then the diving stop leading to the out on a ground ball by Alberto Morales. Uh, when your pitchers throw well, there's a combination there of pitching and defense, Jonah. You can't have good pitching without good defense, and you can't have good defense without good pitching. Um, one, if you only have one or the other, it's not going to work out. Um, obviously, when you have good pitching, 
they make pitches, the opposing team doesn't hit the ball solidly, you have to catch it and throw it, and vice versa. Um, you know, if you're not playing good defense, you know, it doesn't matter what pitches the pitchers throw and how well they hit it. So um, pitching and defense go hand in hand, and in order for our pitchers uh, to throw the way they did this weekend, the defense has a, lot to, a big role and a lot to do with it. Now, we've talked a lot about all the amazing range that a guy like Mason has. He might be the second coming of Torrey Hunter. But uh, how about Alberto Morales <laughs> this season, the way he, he's improved so much with the glove, and he's making a lot of really good plays. He has, uh, there's no doubt, in the infield, he's been our, our steadiest guy. I think he has maybe uh, three or four hours the entire year, and he's, he's t touched the ball quite a bit. Um, he works hard. Uh, he takes pride in his defense, Jonah. He's had a tremendous defensive year for us. Um, and he's beginning to really come around with the bat. Um, Coach Lopez made some changes to his, uh, to his swing. Um, they've been working on it, and really the last, uh, happened about four games ago. Uh, he's really hitting the ball hard. So a lot of credit goes to, to Mo uh, for working hard, taking pride in his defense, and Mason has, again, uh, played wonderful defense for us in center field. Both of those guys have really done an outstanding job for us on the defensive side of the ball. And of course, you go to game three, and it's a, another 2 nothing game. And let's start with how you got those two runs. And it took until two outs in the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> Andy Fortuna comes up. He had one career extra base hit entering the game, and that was a double as a freshman. 125 straight at bats without an extra base hit. So, of course, he hit a walk-off home run. Of course. <laughs> what, I mean, what else, what else is there? Um, you know, Andy has been in the program for four years. Uh, Excellent student, uh, excellent young man. Um, till this point, you know, he's basically being a defensive substitution. Andy's very good defensively, um, or uh, a base running substitution because he's, I mean, he's got very, very good speed. Um, and everything has led up to this moment for him, which was, um, I was happy for him, I was happy for his family, obviously happy for our seniors and our team, um, but really, really happy uh, for Andy's grandmother, uh, which um, unfortunately, um, Andy's mom has passed, um, basically his aunt and his grandmother raised him, and they were all here to see that. So uh, I couldn't be any happier the way the things turned out. 2-0 uh, fastball that he pulled into our, uh, our bullpen in left field to give us the game winner. So it couldn't have happened to a nicer young man, and I'm so happy for him and his family. You know, it takes me back to a few weeks ago we were working on a story on Bronx Country, and we're out in left field doing interviews, and uh, Fortuna hits this ball off the bullpen wall. I would, made us go ducking out of the way, almost knocked us out on the camera, could have taken out St Sam Street, I think we were interviewing at the time. And uh, I remember asking you, who hit that? And you said, and you said, Tuna. And I was like, he's got a little power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, the wind was blowing about 60 that day, and it was BP. And it's, a, it's a little bit different in the game, but you know what? Um, he really, uh, it was a great, uh, great punctuation to finish with this senior class, Jonah. Um, this class is really uh, special in the way that uh, they came to us when we were not in a, in a conference with an automatic qualifier. Um, and that's, that's a great tribute to them, that they wanted uh, to come to Pan Am and be here, even though they knew that basically after our season uh, was over, that was it for them. Uh, the chances of them playing in the postseason or in, the, in a tournament like we are now in the WAC that means something uh, was, uh, was not there for them. So uh, I will be eternally grateful um, of this senior class for uh, for believing us, for coming to school here, um, I mean, representing the program and the university in an outstanding matter. Um, and again, uh, you know, at the top of that list is uh, Andy Fortuna and Brandon Rout. So I'm very happy for our seniors. Everybody got to play. Uh, we got that uh, walk-off uh, win in, in the bottom of the ninth. I mean, what could be better um, to uh, send our seniors out their last home game here at uh, Edinburgh Stadium? Yeah, 12 of the 13 seniors able to get into the game. Of course, Sam Street. He's, he pitched uh, two days in a row. I don't think you were going to bring him in on Sunday. But uh, got everybody else in. Every position player, uh, every senior position player that played reached base, um, including, you know, Fortuna, the walk-off home run. And then the man on base was Jonathan Garza, who was a fifth-year senior. And then pitching-wise, you started Alex Henson. And then you know, your parade of seniors, your five remaining senior pitchers, and each one of them threw a hitless inning. Yeah, they, um, you know what, again, they did an outstanding job, and that's all we asked them to do. You have, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit. You're going to come in with one inning. You don't have to show your entire repertoire. Just go in there with two pitches. Um, they haven't seen you. Um, and all five of them um, came in. And, uh, you know, I thought it was the right thing to do. The family's in town, Jonah. Uh, it's their last home game. Um, yeah, we want to win. Trust me, I want to win as bad as anybody. But sometimes 
Uh, you have to do what your heart says to do and, and what your heart feels it's right. And I thought it was right for all of our seniors to get the opportunity. And as it worked out, uh, we won the game 2 enough. You know, before the game, right before we went on the air for the broadcast, I asked uh, Danny, uh, what do you think Coach does if Alex Henson throws four perfect innings? Does he still go to the bullpen? And, you know, you got, luckily for you, he got taken care of early. Nathan Luke's hit a single in the first inning. But that was also the only base runner he allowed. If he doesn't allow that single and he's got four perfect innings, what do you do? We we'll take him out anyway. It's, it, it was senior day. That, was, that would have been an easy decision. I mean, as a matter of fact, that was the only hit that they got, that they, that yeah. they got all game. Um, they, you know, we went to nothing, but also it was, we threw a one-hitter. Um, that would have been an easy decision, um, even if he would have struggled out the first 12 guys. Um, it was the right thing to do. Again, this, this senior class is very special um, because they came um, to a program, to a university with no automatic bids. Um, you know, Street, Rouch four years ago, Andy uh, four years ago, Howe, Harold. Um, uh, these guys didn't know that we were going to be in the WAC for sure. Uh, when they came, uh, we were still a member of the Great West. Um, so there was talk of the WAC, but nothing was in writing. So even though um, they weren't sure, um, when we recruited this, these guys, I mean, the WAC wasn't even in play, really. The WAC came into play last year. We had already recruited these guys months before. So um, I'm so thankful for, the, you know, this group of seniors uh, that, that, that they came. Uh, they gave everything they had every single day, Jonah. They really advanced the program. And, again, I'll be uh, eternally grateful for them to have the trust and the belief in us um, and, and come here to Pan Am. And, and again, uh, outstanding people uh, on the field, off the field. They really, really uh, – um, Great ambassadors for the entire university and, um, and the baseball program. And they all certainly did well on this senior day. And, you know, after the game, uh, I was talking to Alex Howe, and he mentioned that since he was catching the game that uh, when the ninth inning ended, he went to you and said, if there's a tenth inning, don't take out Harrell. He is throwing great. Um, so w what did you see out of Matt Harrell, and what, did, what has he done to get back to the point of being the guy we know he can be? You know, uh, with Harrell, he's uh, – uh, a, a great ninth inning, um, really, really, um, just very efficient. I think you know, I think it was less than ten pitches. He got three outs. Um, we're cleaning. We, we've been trying, Jonah, to clean up his delivery or simplify it. I think he gets in trouble when too much rotation and too much goes into the windup. Uh, I think when he simplifies, he lifts the stride leg, he puts it down, he throws the baseball. I think that works for him. And he was really, very, um, his delivery was very simple on Sunday. Um, and even though he had told me that uh, Alex and so did Coach Lopez, he goes, hey. If it's tied, leave Harold in and says, no, we're going to go according to the plan. And the plan says one inning. I wanted to make sure, and I was hoping, that the, that the seniors went out on a positive note. Um, and you could not have a better inning than Harold did that, that ninth inning. And I, that's what I wanted him to, uh, and all the rest of the seniors, what I wanted them to remember for the rest of their lives when the game was over. So uh, we had Padron warmed up. Uh, he was ready to come in the game if the game would have been tied in the 10th. But, again, uh, great ninth inning. Who knows what would happen in the 10th. Maybe he would have, you know, allowed a run and, I did not want them not to do that. So, you know, Toke and I got into a little bit of trouble um, as a senior. I didn't want to take him out again. I wanted him to and hope that uh, he would finish uh, strong, which he did. Daniels got into a little bit of trouble. We left him um, in, in, in the game. Chances are any other game, Jonah, we would have relieved for him um, because, again, they struggled a little bit, um, but they got out of it. And, again, the, uh, the last thing or the, their last outing at home is going to be a positive one, and it was the same for Matt Harrell. And now you've become just the second WAC team to take a series from Sacramento State this year and the only WAC team that's eligible for postseason play uh, to take a series from Sacramento State. Well, I can see why. WAC team is, a, I mean, very good, very good players, uh, excellent pitching staff, Jonah, um, and some really, really good coaches. So um, I can see why they only lost, uh, you know, they had only lost one uh, WAC weekend be before us. Um, they're a terrific team. Um, I'm sure uh, that, you know, we'll probably face them in the um, – in the WAC tournament, but again, uh, any one of those teams in the WAC, including ourselves, can beat anybody. Uh, so we can go in the WAC and we can compete and beat you know, the other five teams, but I also know that the other five teams uh, can compete and on any given day can also beat us, so it's going to be a great tournament. Yeah, uh, it starts in, uh, gosh, in a week. Yeah. <laughs> a week from tomorrow, I guess, in uh, Mesa, Arizona. It's uh, Wednesday. We hope that the Bronx participation doesn't have to begin until Thursday. If so, that means they're the number two seed and have a first round bye, and it'll run through Saturday or Sunday, depending mm -hmm. on whether or not a second game of the championship is necessary. We will have the live audio of every single WAC 
tournament game that the Bronx are in anyway. Here on 956sports.com. I'm not broadcasting, you know. No, please don't. The other games, it's just. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> and then, of course, the WAC will be providing video on a subscription basis as well. If you'd like to watch, hey, we understand. All we ask is you hit the mute button and you go to 956sports.com via utpabronx.com. You turn up the audio and stick it with us. Pre-game coverage is always about 10 or 15 minutes before first pitch. And we'll always have the coach's corner so you can hear from Bronx head coach. The one and only Manny Manchana. And if you don't want to hear from me, you can just hear from Jonah Goldberg. Just uh, let him know. So. Yeah, skip the first 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when the game starts, hit the, uh, hit the mute button. Bronx get Northern Colorado this weekend. Central time, I do believe it's Friday at 4, then Saturday and Sunday at 1 p.m. each. We'll have the links to the live stats and the live audio up on utpabronx.com. And then next week, we'll see you in Mesa right here at 956sports.com. Thanks, Jonah.